Hello guys, we're back again with another video. It's been a long time and yeah. Uh, today we're gonna to talk about not much topics as we're on break, is it? It's surprising me the Premier League has taken a break. And the topic I mean, we're gonna talk about. International break, right? It's a bit of a winter break slash international break. Uh, the topic we're gonna to be talking about is who should be Everton's next manager. Uh, yeah, so there's plenty of candidates I mean, we can, can talk can, about. Can I, can I say something before we start? Yeah. Shout out to Bernardo Silva. He's in our homeland today. Yeah, yeah. the boys. Bring, bringing in that much needed dollars and euros. I think. He's uh, not bringing in, he's bringing in pounds. Don't you know? Whatever, pounds or euros, same thing. No, that's yeah. it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. On to more serious matters. I don't think we can call it serious because it's Everton. Uh, the managers we are Go. looking at are Wayne Rooney first. So let's start with Wayne Everton Rooney. club legend. Yeah, club legend who just left like it meant nothing. Uh, so there are some uh, many Everton fans would like this, especially with the incredible job he's doing at Derby County, what do you guys think? Do you think they would? Tell me your thoughts on whether you think it would happen and whether it would be an uh, ideal move or not. So, I've watched a lot of Derby County this season, surprisingly. And, I mean, from a board point of view, it's kind of a similar situation where they haven't spent much money or close to zero in terms of spending. And, Rooney, as a manager, is very defensively organized. Let's say that. Derby have been one of the best defensive teams in the championship. They don't offer much threat offensively. And if you look at their XG, it's actually quite low because they generate a lot of shots from areas outside the box. They don't create a lot of clear-cut scoring opportunities. But what Rooney likes to do is play through his wingers where he lets his wingers keep taking on their man while the rest of the team remains defensively very astute, very compact, very difficult to break down. And he's won, I mean, their derby's, I think, 20-something 20, 20 points, but they would be like 11th place if they didn't get their deduction, which is incredible. And I think for Everton, they need someone who's going to offer them that stability. Rooney could be that guy. And like he said, he's got wingers in Everton who do like taking on their man. I mean, if you play Richarlison on the wing and Demar like Gray on the wing, that's two wingers itself who love to take on a man and get past him. So, from a personnel standpoint, even he's got Colin Kazim Richards at, at Derby, who's a very strong centre forward. And if he can get the best out of Calvert Lewin, from a personnel standpoint, you're looking at it, you're like, okay, it's a seamless fit. But I'm under the impression that the jump from Derby to Everton is just way too big, in my opinion. I just think it's not going to happen with Everton, regardless of how much the fans want it. He's worked with a lot of these players too, hasn't he, during his time at Everton? The likes of he has Alan he's Owen, played with them. Michael Keane, yeah. So it'll be interesting that, but yeah, like you said, when it's way too high a jump. Your thoughts on it, Farhan? Well, you know, I think he's done amazing there as the manager of Derby County, but that is his first real job, right? And uh, moving from the championship to the uh, Premier League's always a huge jump. We saw it with Frank Lampard doing well at Derby County, going to Chelsea and uh, doing horrible. Doing well right. for one season, let's say that. <laughs> so he was um, a club legend as well. So it's all just a case of uh, deja vu if uh, Wayne Rooney actually returns to Everton. Like on paper, it would suit his style. Uh, as Dwayne mentioned, he has got some direct wingers. But I don't think it's the right move for Wayne Rooney. I think he might as well, you know, stay at Derby for the whole season and prove a point, actually. Like, you know, he's got so much more to prove at Derby County than he would at Everton, right? All right. So that's the view on Wayne Rooney. Uh, up next, we have Vito Ferreira, who has actually been in the U. Uh, near uh, Everton area and has actually gone to the interview and he said there's plenty of candidates I'm just going to wait till for their call I've done my interview 
Now, the thing about this man is, he, I think he's the ex-sporting noise, sporting manager. Uh, he has a defined identity. He likes to play with a three at the back, a three, four, three, very counter-attacking type of manager. Again, like you said, when very sta stable team is what he tries to build. And he's had previous links to the club as well. I think it was when Marco Silva was about to join. Uh, what do you think about his... There's not much data about him, but yeah, what do you think? I, I mean, I think for a fact that the Everton job is a very topsy-turvy job. I'll say since David Moyes left, they haven't really had one manager stick to them for an extended period of time. I mean, Roberto Martinez was there for a while. And oh. then he left Belgium. And since then, it's been Allardyce. Um, who else is there? Coleman did a decent job. Coleman did a decent job. But he also got was written off. And I think with Vito, he does build stable teams. But I, I think the board there is so toxic that He's one person who's going to force his way in and out. And if he doesn't get the way he wants to, he's just going to go. Because he's a very influential candidate, let's say that. Everton need the managers in the mould of Pochettino, the nice guys who do as the board tells them to do. If, if for example, that's why we were so against Conte for Tottenham, because Conte is not a nice guy, he's an asshole. But... Poch is a nice guy and I think Everton needs a manager in the nice mold who's going to get along with him. But Vito Ferreira is such a hard ass that he's going to build the teams the way he wants to. If Dominic Calvert-Lewin doesn't perform, there is no English bias with him. He's out if he doesn't perform. And yeah, he, I think Everton's got a great team with two good centre midfielders for that 3-4-3 system. He's going to need up and down players and Ducoria and Allen will be perfect for that. But a 3-4-3... Yeah, and a 3-4-3 in England looks a bit suspicious given the amount of teams that will take the game to them. It, it could play in his counter-attacking system, but it's much more difficult in England to use a 3-4-3. You need more players in the midfield. As, I mean, Tottenham uh, started to play with a 4-3-3 and now they can't play it. But when they play, they are 5-2-3 and they crowd the midfield. Even their wingers come to play as midfielders. They look good. And Chelsea play with a lot of midfielders. City just, I don't know, City has like six midfielders on the pitch. Liverpool have like five midfielders playing together. Trent Alexander-Arnold is a midfielder in itself. And I think if Everton starts to play with three attacking players and only two midfielders, given that Richarlison doesn't have the best work rate and then my Gray also doesn't have the best work rate, I think there'll be a bit, strug a bit, a bit of a struggle there. I think, but with Vito Ferreira, has no doubt that he will extend and change his tactics. He's a great manager. I just don't think he's an Everton type of manager. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, a bit of a familiar face in the Premier League and now currently with Belgium, Roberto Martinez, the FA Cup winner with Wigan. Uh, didn't have the greatest of ends, did he, at Everton, but he does bring a nice brand of football. I'm going to give this one to Farhan because I think he's got a couple of things to say about Roberto. Well, I think it's undeniable that Roberto Martinez is a good man. Sorry, uh, it's undeniable Roberto Martinez is a good manager. He did really well at Everton. Uh, that infamous season where Liverpool came second and Everton came fifth, I believe. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, thank you. Bless you. Where Everton came fifth, I believe. Uh, he did really well, but ever since then, it has not really gone according to his plan, right? So that's the thing with Everton. What baffles me is they've had, you know, really good managers people with good track records, but somehow they just don't seem to be able to perform at Everton, right? Uh, I think Roberto Martinez has done a really, really good job with Belgium as well. And uh, he would be a really good candidate to join once again, just to bring that little bit of 
stability obviously under new new owners uh, for Everton. So I think Roberto Martinez can be seen as a genuine uh, contender for the job. Uh, I think you know at that time, even Everton's relationships with uh, Liverpool was really good under Roberto Martinez. I think both the clubs were actually happy to see each other doing well in the Premier League once again. And uh, yeah, I I just think it's going to be a good candidate for the job. Moving on to Frank Lampard. Of course, uh, English manager likes to integrate youth, and you could see an influx of Chelsea lordies. Probably he'll be the he'll be first to bring uh, Billy Gilmore back, not back to, but he'll bring him to Everton. And uh, yeah, he has good youth integration, and we're seeing the youth come a lot through Everton nowadays, especially with the injury crisis they have had uh, not so long ago. Anthony Gordon, Jared Brentwaite, and uh, Vital- Vitaly Mikolenko is one who they've just bought in. So you could see... Maybe the... Patterson's pretty young as well. Yeah, Patterson as well. So the only problem is it's going to take time uh, like he did, but he asked for time. But he tends to have. I, a I do have a hot take with Lampard, though. I think if they get Lampard this year, in six months, I don't see Lampard working out. I think Lampard's yeah. a long term project who's going to get them playing attractive football, but defensively, he's a bit woeful. I think his four at the back with Chelsea was woeful. Uh, I think he signed Chilwell because of the fact that. Alonso was a terrible left back, but all he had to do was make Alonso a left wing back, and we've seen Alonso being classed there. And I think Lampard's got his ways to go as a manager. He's not he's not the worst manager. He's a good manager, but for a six month project to keep Everton in the league, let's be honest, let's be frank here. Let's be frank here. <laughs> <laughs> Everton is in a relegation scrap, and if you get Lampard. I think you're going. You you have a chance of going down, but in the long term, you have a chance of being a better football team if you stay up. But do we really think that Everton are the type of club to go down? That's the question. I mean, this season's been quite weird, hasn't it? Yeah. Top sitter be Arsenal. I thought I thought Rafa would keep them in the top ten, but there's there's they're 16th or 17th right now. Yeah. The thing about Everton is they came bought in Rafa Benitez. And they wanted him to take control of things. Then, when things were going downhill, they sacked Marcel Brands, the director of football, because they had faith in Rafa. And then, two to three weeks later, after the loss to fast forward to the loss to Norwich, and Rafa Benitez gets the sack. So it's this. It's a lot of uh, impulsive decision making going on. A lot so of right instability now, at the club. You don't have a technical yeah. director, and you don't have a manager as well. So it's important that they get both, not just the manager. We have to keep that in mind as well. Uh, and what Everton do need right now is someone who can, like we said when uh, what we said when Mourinho got sacked at United, win, uh, steer the ship in the so, right yeah for the next yeah. guy to come in. Yeah. So do you think we are going along with that? Do you think Duncan Ferguson is the right man for six months? I mean. In the past, when they gave Duncan Ferguson the job, uh, apart only from for six that months, Moise by Keane, the way. yeah, apart from months. that, apart from that Moise Keane situation where he subbed Moise Keane on and then took him off, and that really destroyed the young lad's confidence. He's actually done a very good job with them. Whenever he's been given the job for like a couple of days, couple of days, I think he had a very big win as well. I can't remember, but he had a big win against someone, Duncan Ferguson, and he, he seems to be. Yeah, he seems to be this intimidating figure that gets the best out of them. But again, the scary part is the interim manager job is going to be looked at very differently after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because Ferguson is a club legend and Everton fans, I think any club, if they get their club legend as an interim manager, they will want him to stay regardless of whether he's his stature as a manager is good or not. For example, if I think a lot of Chelsea fans were distraught when Lampard got sacked, uh, 
uh, United fans are really, uh, speaking from personal experience, when Oli went on that huge winning streak, everyone was like, gave him the contract. In hindsight, that was a mistake because players, people let the emotions get the best of them. So, Duncan Ferguson, as good as he would be for six months, I think he could trick it a bit where they, he could be really, really good. And Everton, without a football director, might be persuaded on emotions and just be like, you know what, let's give him the job. And in hindsight, I mean, in, in the long term, it could look really bad. So, I don't see the point of getting an interim manager and another interim manager. So, I think Duncan should remain as a caretaker for a couple of weeks and they need to get someone in with experience to keep them in the Premier League. Experience to keep them up in the Premier League. That calls for only one man left, Sam Allardyce. But without, <laughs> without he's going to come back to Everton now. Uh, so, yeah, there's no actually right or wrong or ideal person, you could say. Okay, doing this uh, So, yeah, but judging by what Dwayne and we all discussed, if it was for a six month job and purely for a six month job, it's going to be, have to be either Duncan Ferguson. We don't see Roberto Martinez coming in because of the World Cup qualifiers. And Frank Lampard, if he can keep them up and, of course, carry on for the long term successfully, it's going to be Frank Lampard. So that's it for today's video. We'll catch you next time on Three at the Back. Sorry, Did really disconnected. Yeah. All right. Bye.